I know a lot of you guys have been waiting for some winter content. I decided to point my heading north about 2,600 miles from northwest Washington all the way to Tuktiuktuk and start looking at what lies up in the Arctic. The journey starts now. Been driving for eight hours, 37 minutes. We are now 476 miles into this adventure. Day number two, Prince George, British Columbia to Kitwanga. 700 miles into the journey. Start putting in the hours, start laying down the miles. Then the reality sets in that this is gonna be one hell of an adventure. Vanderhoof, Canada, geological center of British Columbia. Now halfway through BC, that feels good. This right here is the start of the Stuart Cassiar Highway. I have a feeling that this is where the adventure is truly going to start. A little bit of a treacherous drive right now. Several inches of solid ice over the top of the actual road surface. If I touch the brakes, tires lock up and I just slide. 1,200 miles since I left Northwest Washington. That right there is a sign that welcomes me to Yukon. This right here is the Arctic Circle. It's been a hell of a push, it's been a lot of driving, but it's been a hell of an adventure. After more than 40 hours of driving, I'm standing in the most unbelievable winter landscape. Mile after mile just clicking by, 17 to 18 more hours to go to reach the Arctic Ocean. It feels like it's just never ending. So far I've driven all the way to the very top of British Columbia, all the way through the Yukon, and now entering Northwest Territory. We have officially entered the insanity zone, negative 40 degrees Fahrenheit. Let's get this show on the road. We got a trip to the Arctic Ocean to make. What's up guys, this is Chad with Living the Van Life up here in the Pacific Northwest of Washington State. I know a lot of you guys have been waiting for some winter content. I came up here to the Pacific Northwest after Baja to get into some winter camping. And by the time I got back up here, winter in the Pacific Northwest had pretty much all but disappeared. The month of January was quite warm. It was extremely dry with almost no precipitation. And I got tired of waiting for the kind of epic winter adventure that I wanted to sink my teeth into. So at that point, I decided to point my heading north and start looking at what lies up in the Arctic. Driving up to the Arctic was always on my bucket list. So I figured, you know what? There is no time like the present. The journey starts now. Now my plan, is to drive all the way up to a little village called Tuktiuktuk. Now the trek from Northwest Washington all the way through British Columbia, across the Yukon, into Northwest Territory and onto Tuktiuktuk is about 2,600 miles. And to put that into perspective, that's like driving from Los Angeles to New York City. It's gonna be a lot of driving. And as I've been researching the temperatures, the further north we get, the colder it will get. Once you get into the Arctic and cross the Arctic Circle, temperatures start dropping well below zero. Temperatures of negative 30, negative 35 degrees Fahrenheit. We are getting into some winter camping right now. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to this adventure to the Arctic.
190 miles into this trek. Been driving for eight hours, 37 minutes. It feels like it's just never ending. Of course, that's a very, very small dent in the total of 2,600 miles all the way up to Tuck de Uk Tuk. When you spend enough time looking at things on a map, you develop a perception that maybe it's not too far away. But I tell you what, you start putting in the hours, you start laying down the miles, then the reality sets in that this is gonna be one hell of an adventure. I think the thing that intrigues me the most of this 2,600 mile journey to the north is just how vastly the landscape will change. The vegetation will change, the weather, the temperature. Right now it's 37 degrees Fahrenheit, which is about three to four degrees Celsius. There is snow now starting to come down. My goal for tonight is to make it to Prince George, which I would say is about a third of the way up British Columbia, where I will stop, get some rest, and continue on tomorrow. Well, here we are up here in Prince George, British Columbia. We are now 476 miles into this adventure since we left Bellingham, Washington. Prince George is actually a fairly decent sized city up here in the interior of British Columbia. Uh, matter of fact, for the evening, I am hunkered down here at a Walmart parking lot. So a little bit of urban stealth camping here this evening in the Sprinter van. Figured I'd uh, give you guys a little bit of a walkthrough of how I've got it set up to make it even possible to successfully urban stealth camp. As we can see here, I've got the Sprinter van parked out at the back of a parking lot off to the outer edge. I've got another fellow van lifer that is uh, decided to hunker down here in the Walmart parking lot as well. As we can see standing outside the van here, there is no evidence of any sort of lights on inside the van. And here in just a second, I'm gonna take you inside and actually show you how much light is truly on inside. Now that's made possible by the window tent that's installed here and I've got the extra dark limo tent that uh, assists with that. I was gonna take you guys inside here and show you what's going on inside, but let's do a little temperature check here as we make our way north. Looks like we're sitting at about 28 degrees Fahrenheit, which is about negative three degrees Celsius. So while it's getting chilly outside there, the diesel heater is cranking away. Let's go inside and see how nice and warm it is in here. We've got plenty of light going on inside here. In fact, I've been chilling out here watching some Baraka on the iPad, hanging out while the diesel heater cranks away down below here. Now up here at the front, we can see the partition curtain that is spread across. So not only is this curtain actually uh, blackout, but it is also insulated. There's uh, closed cell foam inside there that insulates that, which is great because it keeps all the heat from the diesel heater back here in the living space instead of escaping out through the windows. As we start approaching zero degrees Fahrenheit, as we go further north, I'll be able to put those window coverings up. Also will provide more stealth but also more heat protection to keep the heat here inside the cab. We've got 476 miles under our belt on this adventure so far, and that leaves uh, just about 2,200 miles yet to go till we get up to Tuk 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 in the Northwest Territories. People ask, well, why are you doing it in the wintertime? You're crazy. I feel like anybody could do it in the summertime. I wanted to challenge myself even further and try it in the winter. I'm looking forward to getting myself as well as the Sprinter van down into some extremely low temperatures. I spent 38 weeks of building this thing to be capable of just about anything I could think of throwing at it. Definitely wanted to make sure that it was good for cold weather situations, so this is going to be the test. That's it for day one. I'm gonna go ahead and call it a night here, hunker down and get some sleep, and we'll catch you guys in the morning.
14 degrees Fahrenheit and negative 10 degrees Celsius. This is only the beginning for cold temperatures as we head north. So here we go, day number two. We're headed from Prince George, British Columbia to Kitwanga, and that is the start of the Cassiar Highway, which runs up the interior of British Columbia north all the way to Yukon Territory. If you guys haven't done so yet, head on over to liveinthevanlife.com. Get yourself your own Live in the Van Life hoodie and keep warm with me on this trip north to the Arctic. Let's hit the road. Vanderhoof, Canada, the geological center of British Columbia. And what that means is that finally making some progress on my trip north. Yesterday as I watched the map and watched my location barely creep up, I felt like I was making hardly any progress. Now halfway through BC, that feels good. miles into the journey. Yesterday was kind of a long mundane drive with the overcast and the occasional snow. But now getting out closer to the Cassiar Highway, starting to see the mountains and this reality is starting to set in that this adventure is actually happening. Having the sun out definitely brings on a new sense of hope in this situation that it's not just going to be overcast and gray the entire time. I just stopped here at this Petro Canada fuel station. I topped off the Sprinter van with diesel. This right here is the start of the Stuart Cassiar Highway. It runs about 500 miles north to basically the border of British Columbia and Yukon Territory to the Alaskan Highway. My understanding is that the major portion of this highway is actually unpaved and it is gravel and it is the middle of winter time. I have a feeling that this is where the adventure is truly going to start. I just made it the 150 miles up the first bit of the Cassiar Highway and I am at Meziadden Junction and basically what I have found here is that it's kind of what appears to be like a logging camp. They do have it set up like a hotel so if I so wish I could get a room here. They're basically just set up with uh, permanent uh, buildings inside shipping containers and uh, job office trailers. So it's kind of interesting, but I think that's uh, how life rolls uh, the further that we get north up here. 
But uh, nonetheless, the staff has been friendly here. There is a gas station, so I'll fill up before I leave here in the morning. And there is a, uh, a cafeteria here that serves food, and they say the food uh, is actually pretty decent. In fact, they said tonight is spaghetti and rib night. So I think I might go enjoy myself a nice warm meal before I hunker down in the van for the evening. I think one of my new favorite drinks is a good old Kraken spiced rum and Coca-Cola. That's what I'm drinking here this evening. I'm gonna sit down and enjoy a, um, a bit of a cocktail uh, as we hunker down for the evening up here on the Cassiar Highway, making our way towards the Arctic Ocean. One thing that I did actually get installed on, on the trip today was uh, my new thermometer system. With this little thermometer here, it's pretty nice because I can, of course, monitor the temperature here inside the living space of the van. But I also have two remote wireless sensors that I have installed so I can see what the outside temperature is. And then the temperature in the garage space here underneath the bed. There's no heat blowing back there from the diesel heater. As temperatures get well below zero, the further north that I get, I want to make sure that that garage space area is maintaining the proper temperature to be able to allow the batteries to recharge as I use them along on the trip. We're getting up into some interesting territory where the weather really comes off the Gulf of Alaska and blasts into the side of British Columbia and Alaska and causes quite some interesting weather patterns. And we'll be seeing more of that as we travel north. So anyways, guys, I'm going to go ahead and uh, hunker down here in the van for this evening. I've got some movies that I have uh, downloaded on the iPad, and I'm going to kick back. I'm going to enjoy my Kraken and Cola and enjoy some movies way up here in the mountains of British Columbia. So that is the end of day number two, and we'll see you guys in the morning for the beginning of day number three. All right, guys, cheers. We'll see you in the morning. Okay, here we go. Leaving Meziadden Junction. 7.50 a.m. in the morning, the sun's just coming up. Got an interesting journey ahead today. Let's see what we find on the trail ahead. The road has just become a solid sheet of ice. Most of the traffic that is on the Cassiar Highway is all big trucks. And so as the snow accumulates, the trucks just pack it in and pack it in and pack it in. Then it melts, 
then it freezes and it just becomes several inches of solid ice over the top of the actual road surface. The van is definitely sliding in and out and bouncing through the ruts and it is very, very slippery. So a little bit of a treacherous drive right now, making my way through it. It's gonna make for a long 300 miles uh, still yet to go. But this is part of the adventure I got myself into, so we'll get through it, come out the other side, hopefully safe and successful. Well, this is known as Bell 2 Lodge, and there is a fuel stop here, so I went ahead and just stopped and topped off the fuel. It only took about 14 liters, which is not much. It was only 50 miles or so since the last fill up, but being out here in the winter time, not knowing what is open seasonally up here, uh, I just taking the extra precaution and going ahead and topping off fuel every chance that I get. Uh, it sounds like the next fuel stop is about 150 miles north of here at Deese Lake. So that's not too far. I feel confident in that. But there again, because my only source of heat is from the diesel heater, I don't ever want to catch myself in a situation where perhaps I'm stuck or broke down and the van is low on fuel and I run out of heat. So that's why I keep up on that. Uh, it looks like a very interesting lodge here in the winter time. It appears that they offer ski tours as well as heli skiing, which is pretty cool. But uh, we're definitely getting up into some deep snow and uh, this lodge looks really cool covered in snow. insane this just looks like wet dirt road but watch when I touch the brakes I am locked up right there that is an absolute slick sheet of ice right there but the good thing is the sprinter van is actually handling it very very well even with the brakes locked up on this thing the anti-lock brakes uh, work amazingly and just keeping this thing in a straight line and still able to handle it the traction control works great. Uh, I'm actually in two wheel drive right now and not even needing uh, four wheel drive. We have traveled 184 miles since we left the junction this morning. The terrain has been very, very cool. The weather has been off and on, cloudy, foggy, a little bit sunny. But now 
the clouds have set in, precipitation has set in, and it's now snowing. I'd say it's probably considered a light snow at this point. The vegetation has changed tremendously. Kind of reminds me of a Dr. Seuss illustration of some sorts. <laughs> the roads are now fully covered in snow, which I prefer over just the sheets of ice. Still rolling in two-wheel drive. Well, I just pulled into Dees Lake. This little town, this little community just literally popped up out of nowhere. This is known as the most important fuel stop on the route. The direction that I'm heading, it is uh, 150 miles to the north. I've got 188 miles of fuel left. This loader here that is uh, removing snow in the parking lot just dug up the only telephone line. This is the only store, this is the only gas station right here their telephones are now out. And that telephone line is responsible for credit card. Well, let's just put it this way. Telephone repair guys aren't uh, readily available and it could be uh, five to six days before phone lines are ready. So it's cash only. I think what I'm gonna do is scrounge through the van and see what uh, little bit of cash that I actually have with me and maybe it'll buy me enough to uh, at least get up the road. This literally just happened as I was pulling up. Uh, other people that are fueling at the station here are having the same problem. I think one thing that actually might be saving grace is when I traveled down to Mexico, I did grab a whole bunch of cash and I actually stowed it away in various different spots in the van and I'm hoping that I can actually find where that stuff is. It was small amounts, but who knows, it might be enough. <laughs> Look at that, small handful. There's another handful back here in my backpack. I also stored some in here. And I still got that there as well. Oh, I like to see that, that's a five. So between that and what I've got here in my wallet, 10, five, 15, there's 30, 11, 12, 13, 19, 20. Ha! Ah! $75 in cash. Thanks to Mexico, actually had me prepared $75 and this is gonna save my ass and get me the heck out of here. Okay, well that was a close one. Topping off with fuel, continuing on from Dees Lake. Got 150 miles to get to the Alaskan Highway. about the uh, 1,215 mile mark since leaving Northwest Washington. That means it's uh, approaching just about the halfway mark to the Arctic Ocean and Tuk Tuk Tuk. Got about 35 more miles to go before I hit the Alaska Highway. Pretty much all the way at the very most northern point of British Columbia which all in itself feels like quite the accomplishment for sure.
1,200 miles since I left Northwest Washington. That right there is a sign that welcomes me to Yukon. Reaching the Yukon, it feels damn good. It's been a hell of a push. It's been a lot of driving, especially to do it in three days, but it's been a hell of an adventure. So here we are. From here, it's just a couple miles, if that, uh, to the Alaska Highway. Then I got to backtrack to Watson Lake, which is where I'll stay the night and fuel up there. Home sweet home for the night here in Watson Lake. About six degrees Fahrenheit, which is about negative 15 degrees Celsius. So it's definitely getting cold out here. That's the coldest it's been so far on the whole trip. Cheers to accomplishing the trek across British Columbia, the Cassiar Highway, and making it all the way up here to Yukon. Unfortunately, it was so socked in most of the time, I didn't really get to see as much of the scenery of what I uh, had expected to be able to see up there, but nonetheless, it was uh, about making the journey and doing so in wintertime, and uh, here we are. It ended up taking me about 10 hours and 15 minutes from leaving the uh, junction this morning to getting up here uh, into the Yukon. So, simple dinner for tonight, but looking forward to it. A little bit of mac and cheese and the old jet boil. Just a little bit of comfort food as I kick back and relax for the evening. Now I like to go ahead and cook my noodles in the jet boil here, actually in the sink, because if and when the damn thing boils over, at least it boils over into the sink and not over my cabinets. The actual lid of the jet boil has a strainer built into it. So when it comes to draining your pasta, you just do so right out of the lid itself. Okay, and so we don't just have regular old Velveeta mac and cheese. Let's go ahead and add some uh, chili garlic sauce to it just to put a twist on it. Let's go ahead and add some New Mexico green chili just for the fun of it because you know what? Why not? And at least that'll put a little bit of a twist on it. I know this isn't cooking over a campfire or anything like that, but after a long haul like that, I just need a simple meal. Damn, that looks tasty right there. <laughs> That's some plain old simple mac and cheese. Twist it up to have a bit of a bite. New Mexico green chili comes through tremendously. got the window coverings up here I've got the partition curtain up here also window covering there and here as I get into bed I will put up the rear partition 
It's an insulated covering that partitions the whole back door section off. And it's another layer of insulation. When I open the back doors to access anything in the garage down underneath, this is all partitioned off with insulated material and none of the heat escapes. None of the rain, none of the snow comes in and falls on my bed or my pillows. And uh, that'll really help keep things much, much warmer uh, as things continue to cool off as we head north. It's gonna be a test uh, to see how prepared this vehicle is, how prepared I am. Anyways, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, hunker down for the evening, get a good night's sleep. We'll catch you guys in the AM. Well, survived night number one up here in the Yukon. Temperatures dropped to about uh, negative two degrees Fahrenheit, which is about negative 20 degrees Celsius. Uh, the van so far has done very, very good. I had the diesel heater set at uh, about three out of a 5.5. Uh, so just over halfway, I would say and it kept the uh, interior of the van at about 61 degrees which is uh, more than comfortable this morning making the 242 mile trek to the town of whitehorse the temperature is three degrees fahrenheit negative 16 degrees celsius the snow is coming down hard the roads are treacherous ice extremely slippery if i just touch the brakes the tires lock up and slide. I've got five hours of driving in this, but who knows how that'll go in these conditions. Driving in this is all hands on deck, mentally. The snow continues to fall harder and harder. The road is becoming flat white, ever harder to discern where the lanes are and where the road ends and the ditch begins. I was just beginning to second guess my decision in continuing to make this drive all the way to Whitehorse in these conditions. Perhaps it's a little crazy and irresponsible doing this. Then all of a sudden I'm passed by two motorcyclists who are completely exposed to these weather conditions. Then I realized if they're making this trek in this kind of weather, well, I can certainly be making this trek here inside my van. snow has now let up and the visibility on the road is much, much better. Matter of fact, the clouds have lifted and now I'm able to see a lot of the beautiful landscape and the terrain and the mountains. Everything is covered in snow. It's downright beautiful. Here we are in beautiful downtown Whitehorse. Got here last night, it was like 46 degrees Fahrenheit, which was really, really warm. Everything was melting by 10 p.m. It was 32 degrees and it was snowing. And overnight, it just laid down a nice thick layer of some fresh snow in downtown Whitehorse. The crazy thing is, is that driving to get here, you felt like you're driving through the middle of nowhere for hours and hours and hours, and then you come up on the city, and it's 
pretty wild to me how these cities exist out here. I'm gonna start out this morning. I've got about a six hour drive up to Dawson City, which is north of here. So from here, I'm gonna leave the Alaskan Highway, head out on the Klondike Highway, all the way to Dawson City. Been driving now for 32 hours, and according to the map, I've got about 21 hours yet to go. So it's a big trek, but making our way for sure. Guys, living the van life stickers, living the van life hats, living the van life t-shirts, or maybe it's Ooh. a living the van life hoodie. Whoa. Guys, don't be a fool, be cool. Livingthevanlife.com, go check it out, get yourself some LTVL swag, lots to choose from. Livingthevanlife.com. Okay, Dawson City, let's go. <laughs> About 100 miles into the Klondike Highway and found this cool little general store. Got a spot to stretch the legs, feed the sprinter van. The back of my van here is a lifeline to tools and equipment that I need in the back. So just about every time I stop in fuel, I try to hit it with the uh, ice scraper and the brush. I've had this actually freeze up on me at one point and not be able to get inside. and on we go. The mighty and the wild Yukon River that runs from the interior of British Columbia up through the Yukon before it eventually ends up in the Bering Sea. Right now, this scenery, absolutely stunning. And the fact that it's clear out with sunshine is the icing on the cake. I couldn't be more thrilled right now with the way this is going. just clicking by I've been driving for 36 and a half hours since I left Northwest Washington the territory the landscape the snow it's just a complete winter wonderland at least 17 to 18 more hours to go to reach the Arctic Ocean
So here we've made it the whole 331 mile trek from Whitehorse up to Dawson City. Well, in my absence, I'll be surely missing you. I've been working every day, and I sure hope you love this too. How do you know when you are deep, deep into the far north of Canada? That's when you find a snowmobile sitting outside the, the pub, just idling to stay warm. So when they're done with their cocktails at the bar, they just load up on the snow machine and they get the hell out of here. My name is Al Sider. I live here in Dawson. I've lived here for 18 years. I used to operate the taxi, uh, the only legal taxi in Dawson, but it went bankrupt due to uh, COVID. It has gotten as cold as negative 50 Celsius, which is about, well, maybe negative 60 uh, on the Fahrenheit scale. Wow. And this year, the amount of snow that we've got is a lot more snow than we've had in the uh, last 18 years. <laughs> oh, mostly just uh, walk my dog and uh, go on hikes. I do a little bit of hunting and fishing. There's a lot of dog sledding. And as you can tell, there are a few bars that are open, a few restaurants. There's a nice fire going on down there. Where? I want to go on down. Gazebo. Oh, okay. Now we know we're in Canada, that is for sure. I'm gonna go find myself a nice warm pub, enjoy a cocktail or two before turning in for the night. Lord, I know I've done some evil in my time, but that don't mean there ain't no goodness in this evil heart of mine. And it don't mean that I can't see the light. It seems to be about Dawson City where things start to get severely into the negative zone. Hey Siri, what's the temperature outside? It's minus 24 degrees outside. Right now it's uh, showing as 67 degrees here inside the van. I would consider this being the first night in the true far north. Okay guys, I'm gonna go hit the hay and uh, wake up in the morning because we've got a big drive as we start up the Dempster Highway working our way towards the Arctic Circle and this uh, wintertime adventure. All right guys, catch you in the morning. It's not broken. How's that for some cold temperatures right there? Holy hell. Negative 40 degrees Fahrenheit. We have officially entered the insanity zone. The zone where the Celsius scale and the Fahrenheit scale actually start crossing each other. It's negative 40 degrees Celsius as well. The good news is, actually survived through the night. This is by far the coldest that I have ever camped in, in my van. It hurts to breathe, which is actually pretty crazy. I can feel my nostrils like freezing up. I've only been outside for maybe two minutes. This is wild. The van did everything. It was meant to be the diesel heater cranking away. I actually had to wake up in the middle of the night and turn the heat down because it had gotten too hot. It was like 75 degrees inside there. The fact that the diesel heater kept everything so warm inside the van, is it's a huge testament to that. But not only that, there has to be something that actually runs that heater. And that's where the Battleborn batteries come into play. And here we are at negative 40 degrees and this whole entire operation is depending on the Battleborn lithium batteries. It has become the lifeline of this whole entire project. All the camera gear is charged there, all my lighting, most importantly the heat. Here's the true question of all, is how does a diesel sprinter van start at negative 40 degrees Fahrenheit without being plugged in? I do not have a block heater on this. Woo! 
<laughs> a lot of what we're hearing right now on that cold startup, all the pulleys are cold, all the belts are cold. That's just a matter of how that's got to work until this thing gets warmed up. All that stuff will quiet down. But the good news is it started. Hell yeah. Outside maybe five minutes. Mustache is already collecting ice. Sleepy little town, but yet has so much character. Super cool. Let's get this show on the road. We got a trip to the Arctic Ocean to make. This is the start of the Dempster Highway. 541 miles to Tuk Tuk Tuk. I've prepared myself. I've prepared my equipment, it's time to put it to the test and see if we can conquer the Dempster Highway in the middle of winter all the way to the Arctic Ocean. I'd be lying to you 100% if I said that I was not nervous about this trek. Matter of fact, I'm nervous as hell. This is definitely the zone where everything becomes no joke. I have to be very, very careful with Everything that I do, everything has to be calculated and well thought out. These are very dangerous temperatures for sure. And we're about to embark on this journey. Let's see what it's all about. Unbelievable, I cannot, I, ca I can't even put into words to explain what it's like to be here. The journey that it's taken to get this far. After more than 40 hours of driving, I'm standing in the most unbelievable winter landscape
I'm just at awe of this landscape and just the remoteness. I've seen it in pictures, I've seen it in, in movies and videos, but to actually stand here, you don't get this feeling by looking at it in books or pictures or videos. It's a whole different feeling. And just the journey of what it takes to get out here and how remote it is, it makes it truly special. And it's one thing to do it in the summertime, but to take on the feat of doing it in the wintertime, it's definitely an accomplishment that feels very, very good. I tell you what, I have never been more happy to find a bit of civilization about 250 miles into the Dempster Highway. That is a long, long remote drive through some treacherous winter roads just in time for a magnificent sunset. Well, good morning guys. We are uh, waking up here this morning. It's negative 25 degrees Fahrenheit. There is a uh, bit of a wind blowing here this morning, so the wind chill factor is definitely down there. I'm here at Eagle Plains, which is a halfway point between the junction and Anuvik on the way to Tuktiuktuk. -tuk. Here you've got gasoline, you've got diesel, you've got a small uh, automotive repair shop. But then also there is a hotel, a lounge, and a restaurant here for the truckers and the travelers who are passing through to stop and bed down overnight. And I tell you what, that was a welcome sight when I rolled up on that here last night. I've had to uh, make quite a few adjustments to the Sprinter van in order to make it work. The temperatures are so cold and when you're driving 50 to 60 miles an hour, you can imagine the windshield factor on your whole entire cooling system. It becomes too overpowering for the engine to actually keep up and build enough heat to operate properly. In fact, it got to the point where the diesel exhaust fluid system was beginning to fail. So I've spent the last hour or so shoving cardboard into my grill to block that cold, cold air and allow the Sprinter van to actually get up to proper operating temperatures. I've found that that has been hugely important up here in the far north. Hopefully this does the trick and we can get ourselves up and into Inuvik. All right guys, let's get this adventure started back up and let's hit the road. Still got about another 250 miles to go on to Inuvik. negative 40 degrees this is crazy to be able to jump out of the sprinter van for just a second and uh, experience it's one thing but 
if anything were to go wrong and trying to survive out here, it wouldn't take long. This is no joke. I can feel my nostrils freezing as I breathe air in. <coughs> it's actually really hard to breathe in. Literally, if you have your hands out for not even a minute or two, it instantly wants to freeze. Just to operate the camera, it's, it's almost impossible. Then you add a wind chill factor and it's insane. Let this be an example of how remote this is here. Driving along on this highway, I come across this sign. Watch for aircraft landing on roadway. They're so remote that there's no airstrips out here that they actually use the road uh, as emergency landing strips. Way the heck out here. Very, very dangerous indeed. Oh my God. Oh shit. Literally out for the two minutes to take a picture of the sun and the trees. Everything freezes on your face. You can feel your eyelashes freezing. It doesn't take long. This right here is the Arctic Circle. That means we are officially in the Arctic. From here on north, there's at least one day out of the year where the sun does not set for 24 hours. And there's also one day out of the year that the sun does not rise for 24 hours. And that is what defines the Arctic Circle. No big deal. Just eating some lunch up here at the Arctic Circle. I think that's one thing that I've realized that I need to make more time to stop and actually eat some food, nourish my energy. The last, I can't even remember how many days I've been driving now, but five or six days I've just been driving solid and it's easy to uh, not stop and eat, but it's important. I notice it definitely helps with the mood. Uh, and the energy to just get through these drives. So I made myself some bone broth with some ready-made fettuccine noodles. And I actually had some Frito corn chips sitting in the cabinet, so I went ahead and threw those in just for some extra added texture, but makes a bit of a soup. The fact that it's nice and warm is perfect, because right now <laughs> we're in the Arctic. just screams through here and the absolute frigid temperatures put a whole nother vice on the landscape. This here is truly the Arctic. So far, I've driven all the way to the very top of British Columbia, all the way through the Yukon, and now entering Northwest Territory. The van still continues to be a champ, although I've had to make some modifications to it for it to actually withstand this cold. It's much, much happier now, and now this Sprinter van is getting us all the way up to the Arctic. Northwest Territories, let's go!
this ice road, as soon as I cross north into Northwest Territories, has become absolutely phenomenal. It is smooth. I don't know that I've ever driven anything this smooth. Definitely none of the freeways down south. This is like a NASCAR track up here in the frozen north of Canada. The mighty Mackenzie River, the longest river in all of Canada. It also turns out the Mackenzie is the second largest drainage basin of any North American river after the Mississippi. Now in the summertime, this river crossing on the Dempster Highway is actually operated by a small ferry that carries cars and people across the Mackenzie. But here in the Arctic, in the wintertime, temperatures get so cold that the whole entire river actually freezes over. They have to pull the ferry boat on shore and the only way to cross the Mackenzie River on the Dempster Highway in the wintertime is by driving this ice road. Rolled into Anubik this evening about sunset. So I'm just throwing together a quick simple meal with some items that I had here. I had a can of salmon, so I decided to make a bit of a tuna style salad here. So I mixed some uh, mayonnaise with it, some relish, even put some bacon bits in there and mixed it all up. I also had some ready-made rice. I just boiled some water in the jet boil, getting that heated up and gonna put that with the uh, tuna salad. I've got some bread over here, and of course, got a whiskey mixed up, some good old Canadian club here this evening. But uh, yeah, just hanging out here inside the van. You know, the temperatures are far, far below zero. It's very dangerous temperatures, uh, and it's taxing on the vehicle, and it's just remote. So there's a lot of nerves of just a lot of distance to cover in some extreme temperatures. Uh, with not a lot of people around and a lot can go wrong very easily but other than that it is absolutely gorgeous it truly felt like you're on a different planet uh, so that was that was very cool enjoying my evening sipping a cup of whiskey listening to some music and uh, ready for a meal then I'm gonna hunker down for the evening catch a good night's sleep and then tomorrow we head on to tuck sounds like there's a little bit of weather moving in but we're gonna see if we can overcome that. Hopefully that doesn't hinder the 100 miles that we've got to go to the Arctic Ocean. All right guys, we'll catch you later on. Well, this is the urban stealth camping situation for last night here in Anuvik. When you're dealing with those kind of weather conditions, these kind of temperatures where it's been known to get down, like we found, negative 40 degrees, uh, this isn't quite the time to go out and have the romantic campouts out in the wilderness. I've opted to stay closer to town, closer to facilities if anything were to go wrong with the van, the diesel heater, anything, at least I'm close by civilization rather than parking myself way out in the wilderness. It's a big enough trek to be making the trip between these communities. So when it comes to hunkering down for the night, 
I'm choosing the urban stealth camp route. This morning woke up to about eight degrees Fahrenheit. Snow's coming down, there's a high wind warning, blowing snow and low visibility. Still got 95 miles to go, about two and a half hours worth of travel. And with this weather, this could be a little bit sketchy. Got uh, the diesel heater, got plenty of water, got lots of power full up on diesel and lots of backup food supplies. So definitely prepared for that. Today is summit day. We're gonna go summit this mountain, this 2,500 mile mountain all the way to the Arctic Ocean. We'll go see what this is all about. Let's do it. <laughs> Well, damn it. With these wind storm warnings coming in and then of course the snow starting to fall, I wondered how that was going to affect travel up to Tuck. Gonna go ahead and trust the authorities on this and if they've closed the road, I'm gonna go ahead and heed those warnings. I'll probably just stand by here in Inuvik and just wait this weather out. And of course I've got the facilities to be able to do that and hopefully this weather passes. I'll head back toward Inuvik, see what I can drum up. So here we are, we're stuck in a new Vic, but why don't we just take a moment to talk about the new Live in the Van Life merch. Guys, we've got Live in the Van Life hats, Live in the Van Life t-shirts, Live in the Van Life stickers. Also, my favorite, this is a nice, comfortable, Whoa. live in the van life hoodies. We've got all sorts of colors, we got all sorts of sizes, we got all sorts of options. <laughs> Guys, you know the drill. Don't be a fool, be cool. Liveinthevanlife.com. Make sure and go on over, get your merchandise, and be cool. Just like the rest of us that have our cool live in the van life hats, hoodies, t-shirts, stickers. Liveinthevanlife.com. Do it. Yeah. With that being said, I actually just got word that the road all the way to Tuk 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 is now open. We've got a trip to the Arctic Ocean to make. Let's do this. It's uh, later in the afternoon, but I just checked my travel time. I've got time to make it up there before uh, sunset. So uh, it's still snowing, but I think the major concern was the winds. And it sounds like the winds have uh, died down. So I'm gonna go ahead and jump in, make the push, see if we can't reach the Arctic Ocean here this evening. So got a bit of a drive, gonna start going. Let's do this. So here we go again. The adventure continues once more. 94 miles, two hours, 33 minutes. Estimated time of arrival is 6.13. Gray weather has socked in. Both hands on the wheel, headed northbound out of Anuvik. The only way to be able to drive up to Tuk 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 was in the winter time on the very famous ice roads that actually headed up the Mackenzie River. That's actually where the famous ice road truckers came from. The truckers that would travel from Anuvik up to Tuk 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 and hauling their dangerous loads. In 
2017, this highway was finished being built and that allows people to be able to drive to and from Tuk 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 over land in all four seasons. I started smelling a uh, tinge of diesel exhaust inside the van and figured it had to bend with the heater. The end of the tailpipe down here ended up filling up with ice and actually plugged up the exhaust. Tapped the end of that pipe and luckily it became unplugged and it's all fine. Now it's actually building up some heat, starting to thaw that pipe out, so I think we'll be okay now. Unfortunately, the exhaust of these diesel heaters end up in spots a lot of times where they're susceptible to spray from the slush, the snow, the ice, the rain, etc. And if you're not careful, it can build up and actually plug up either the intake or the exhaust. So what I like to do in these cold, cold situations is crank the heater up so it's generating enough heat to keep itself thawed out. And that was a mistake I made before I traveled today is I still had it set on low and it just couldn't keep up to, to keep its system uh, thought out. Sounds like it's running good now. Crisis is averted and now we head on north up the highway. The snow drifts along the sides of the highway here are reaching seven, eight feet tall in some spots. The wind starts blowing and it just accumulates snow in huge, huge drifts. And that's what makes this stretch up to Tuck so dangerous. If you were to get caught out here in one of those snow drifts, it could be a long time before they uh, are able to get to you. I've driven this whole entire way in two wheel drive, mainly just to conserve as much fuel as possible because it's such long distances between fuel stops. I have been absolutely impressed with the performance of these BFG KO2 tires. They have performed very, very well on hundreds and hundreds of miles in this slick, icy, snowy road conditions. I can't say enough about the traction control on the Mercedes drivetrain. With the performance of the tires, the performance of the Mercedes-Benz traction control, I've been able to, to do this thing just fine, comfortably in two-wheel drive and maintaining good speeds. I'm usually going between 50, 55 miles an hour. Definitely pleased with how all of that is performing and unfolding.
2,487 miles, 56 hours and 48 minutes worth of driving all the way to get to this point. And here we are standing on top of the world. There's not another human, there's not another building, there's not another bit of civilization, nothing between me and the North Pole besides hundreds of miles of frozen ice out there across the frozen Arctic Ocean. On February 22nd, 2022, that means it's 2-22-22 on a Tuesday in Tuktiak Tuk, and we are standing at the Arctic Ocean. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, we made it. Arctic Ocean. I think one thing that a lot of people think is that it's still an ocean at this time of year. But in the dead of the winter, the true fact is the Arctic Ocean is frozen over with many, many, many inches of ice. And you can actually walk out on it. Most people that visit this spot in the summertime, they take a dip in the Arctic Ocean when it's thawed out. And they are part of the Polar Bear Club. However, I don't have that opportunity here in the dead of winter time. So I guess I have no other choice but just to lay down and do a snow angel on top of the Arctic Ocean. On the back of the Arctic Ocean sign, it's tradition to put your sticker up here and leave your mark on having made it all the way up here to Tuck and the Arctic Ocean. And right here above me, I see that Expedition Overland has left their sticker here. The folks over at Expedition Overland have been a huge inspiration in making this trek all the way up here to the Arctic Ocean. So I think that's a perfect home for a Living the Van Life sticker right there. To commemorate the old van again, this is the sticker that I'm going to put up on the sign. At least it made it here in spirit. Just jumped in the van here to do a quick, simple, warm snack uh, here in the jet boil. Got some chicken bone broth. Got these uh, cup of noodle style little meals here. Gonna whip something up here. Um, the great thing about this stuff is actually I've got it all stored up here in the upper cabinet. Uh, the bone broth stores nicely up here. I've got several meals worth of that all tucked away back in here. A few of these uh, cup of noodle things, these are really nice. It's a healthy sized uh, meal and then a couple other just you know canned soup 
some luncheon meat, uh, some canned fish up here. But anyways, all the food goods are up there. And for this trip, I've just done things quick and simple because it's so much driving and it's so much trying to survive the cold. So anyways, rather than just putting boiling water in this here cup of noodle meal, I'm going to actually warm up uh, some bone broth here in the jet boil and use that for the soup, give it a little extra kick. It definitely would have been nice to be out doing some campfire cooking and chilling around a fire, but I hope you guys can imagine what kind of challenge that would pose in conditions like this. The task of driving, the task of filming, the task of just flat out surviving these conditions is a challenge all on its own. So warm, simple meals it is. Normally these cup of noodle meals here just require hot boiling water, but like I said, to give it that extra kick, I went ahead and uh, fixed it up with some of the chicken bone broth. is blowing like crazy coming in off of the frozen Arctic Ocean. Picking up all the snow, blowing it in through the buildings and the houses here in Tuktoyuktuk. -tuk. It's amazing how they've created and sustained life up here. What they endure so isolated in the far north in the frigid Arctic. I am one of the first outsiders to be able to come in and uh, experience this in nearly two years. Very, very cool to be able to make the trek up here. I feel thankful the fact that the community of Tuktoyuktuk -tuk and Northwest Territories as a whole actually allowed me to come in to film my film about coming up to the Arctic. They take COVID very seriously up here in these small isolated towns. Uh, an outbreak could be disastrous. So they have kept it on lockdown.
people are extremely friendly. The mayor of Tuk 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 and his friend Eddie, they came to uh, hang out at the van and welcome me to the town of Tuk Tuk Tuk. We shared a selfie in front of the Arctic Ocean sign. Very, very thankful, very, very fortunate. So thank you guys for accepting me in here. It has been absolutely phenomenal, a trip of a lifetime. I'm greeted here by Mr. Rob. He is a local. He's lived here for 48 years, all his life. I am Rob Grubin. I've been born and raised here and do all my livelihood hunting polar bears, whatever is good for our community, for the elders, because some of us still live on traditional foods. Polar bears and foxes, wolves, wolverines. We're basically still living off the land, so. It's brutally cold and isolated. If you don't have the money to get out once in a while, it's brutal. So some of us really get isolated and some of us uh, try and, you know, the odd jobs with the economy really low and the epidemic. So right now it's, it's slow, but it's nice to see tourists come in. Good to see different people and friendly people. So it's, it's really good. It's a pleasure to meet right you, man. There, buddy. All, all men, man, it's a pleasure. Yeah. Okay, man. I have a feeling you're gonna make me take you home, aren't you? You literally will not leave my side the whole entire time. Hey, hey, you wanna get up? As I rolled up to the Arctic Ocean sign here this afternoon, I was greeted by this cute little puppy. Uh, these sled dogs are raised up here to live in these kind of conditions. It's definitely found interest in hanging out with me this afternoon as I cruised around town. It's been quite cold and blustery out so I figured I'd bring it inside and feed it a uh, warm snack. According to some of the locals that I chatted with it sounds like the pup lives here in town and they were going to go ahead and notify the owners that uh, they could come down here and get it. I know, you're a cute pup. Yes, you are a cute pup. What an adventure. It's like climbing a mountain. We all have our own mountains to climb. This was definitely one of my mountains. Definitely my biggest mountain yet. It's a big world out there. There's plenty of adventures, so who knows what mountains come beyond this, but cheers to this mountain right here. And cheers to all the mountains that led up to this mountain. Because before there is ever any biggest mountain, there's hundreds of smaller mountains that come before the big one. So to be sitting here on the Arctic Ocean and looking back at all the adventures that have been had, all the times that have led up to this, all the successes, all the failures, all the heartaches, all the rejoices, this, this is right here is what it's like to stand on top of a mountain, at least on top of the world. <laughs> this is the mother Arctic Ocean guys, the mother Arctic Ocean. What in the hell? I mean, there's always enjoying a sunset at the beach. That's all great and all. But when you can sit and spend an evening enjoying a sunset over a frozen Arctic Ocean, truly a special moment. I definitely want to give a cheers to the old Vanigan. The old Vanigan that could had many, many adventures. He's definitely part of having climbed this mountain. 
Alright, I gotta turn this off and enjoy this for a bit. Sorry guys. This is my time for a second. <laughs> Oh, come here, bud. You want to come inside? You want to come inside? Come on. 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 I don't know if it's better for you to come in or stay out. You come in here and get all warm. There you go. There you go. Hope you stay warm out there. Whew. I just spent the last hour and a half setting up a time lapse to go for the next four and a half hours because outside there's a pretty incredible northern light show going on out across the Arctic Ocean and uh, wanted to take the camera out with the slider set up and capture that. Uh, time lapse is a big commitment and you don't know until the morning where you go and check to see if you have a treasure or not. But nonetheless, it's out there capturing. And we are camping at the Arctic Ocean. The Arctic Ocean right now is literally just a matter of a few yards outside the slider looking due north towards the North Pole. Okay, I'm going to uh, get to work on cleaning this place up and getting it ready for bed. I can say that I've woke up in some pretty amazing places in my time of living the van life. Never did I ever think that I could wake up here on the Arctic Ocean in the middle of winter time. This might go down as perhaps the wildest camp spot I've ever, ever had. It did get down to a negative 26 degrees Fahrenheit last night, but the van inside stayed nice and comfortable as a testament to the diesel heater kept it nice and comfortable and the sprinter van it's passed the true test the fact that it got me all the way up here to the frozen arctic it managed to keep me safe it managed to keep me comfortable and warm it's become an amazing habitat for sure 
2,487 miles. Eight days, 56 hours and 38 minutes of driving. And here we are, the top of the world. We made it all the way the frick up here. It's so crazy. So, so crazy. Yeah. Just what it's like to be standing out here. It's unbelievable. Like I said, this for me has been my mountain. And now to have been able to stand at the top, at the summit, as any good mountain climber will tell you, once you get to the top, your climb is only halfway done. Got a long ways to go to get back. But I think this goes ahead and wraps up this Arctic van life adventure. And I'm gonna get out of here and start making my way south. Guys, thank you so much for being part of this adventure. I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did. If you're not already part of the channel, I'd like to welcome you to go ahead and hit the subscribe button. Hit the like button. Make sure and share it with any friends and family you think might appreciate this video. But most importantly, I'd love to hear your comments in the comment section down below the video. All right, guys. I'm out of here. Peace out. Keep on trucking.